It is Heart Health Month. It's February, and it's always a pleasure when we have Helen Charbonneau joining us. So once again, in studio, registered dietitian. Great information for us. You know, yes, it's, it's, I'm hoping. It, well, it, I just I got the rundown, so I, I'm looking forward to sharing it with the viewers. So if we're talking, how you know, Hearty Health Month. Want to start there in terms of the sure. health, in terms of our hearts, but it really where it really trickles down to, because February is Heart Month, and we're looking at not only heart health, and I think people segment them. You know, if you have high cholesterol or you have family history, like we were talking about, that you may have a heart attack. But you have to look at your overall nutrition. And I think that's the problem with society. First of all, obesity is just rampant. And if we're going to do one thing with heart health, I remember a couple of years ago the government gave um, millions of dollars to the Heart Association to try and get heart disease down. Well, we need to put that money in obesity as well and trying to get people eating better, not necessarily losing weight, but just eating better in general. So I'm going to talk about meal balancing today and then talk about foods at the same time mm -hmm. that can reduce your cholesterol levels in your blood. So for example, at breakfast, okay, the first thing we're going to look at is fruit. So we need minimum two fruit a day, maximum three if you're trying to lose weight. Good soluble fiber. So I put like an orange or you can have some, um, any and kind of fruit in the morning. You usually want the fruit the first thing, right? To have the, the Eating fruit, it for the yeah, first thing like on morning? an empty stomach to have the fruit kind of be the one thing that goes through first or it doesn't matter? It doesn't of... matter really because digestive enzymes aren't that smart. Once it gets in there, they go, okay, my job, and then they and just then they go start. to it. Yeah, so the meal combining and things, there's not a lot of research on that, mm -hmm. and hopefully there will be, and maybe there are, are some scientific um, evidence that that may be happening, but right now there's not enough research. So what you want to do is three fruit a day. So I, uh, two to three, so I put maybe as a snack here. Fruit is great as snack, and then at breakfast, try and have a fruit. Vegetables, we need minimum four a day. Two vegetables here, so let's have some tomatoes and let's have some salad here. So you try and do like a, a red and a green kind of thing. And over here, let's do some carrots and some green peppers. Okay. okay, so there you have your four servings. And then grains. Grains are very high in helping reduce cholesterol levels because they have, like for example, oatmeal has beta-glucan, which is like a, a gluey kind of substance once it's made. You know when you make oatmeal? Mm -hmm. So for breakfast, it's a good idea to have some whole grains to help reduce cholesterol levels because they're high in soluble fiber. So at breakfast, we can have some oatmeal here. And then if you're adding some milk, you're putting the protein on with it. Okay, so we need to balance the protein, the carbohydrates and the grains, and the fruit. Over here at lunch, I put, um, this is a nice rye bread. And again, rye, because it's a grain, it's got the, some of these soluble fibers that will help reduce cholesterol so levels. So rye would be a good choice of bread? Rye, anything but white, I call it. Okay. Anything but white, because different grains have different nutrients. So you can try cracked wheat, you can try rye, you can try, um, you know, a lot of people I are like gluten-free. Yeah. yeah, fairly nicely there, done. There's there we tuna. are. Or we can have a tuna sandwich yeah. and put the lettuce on top. This is cabbage, actually. And I love the shredded cabbage, and I love its versatility. Then over here, we've got quinoa. Again, very high. Uh, also in protein quinoa, it's got like 11 grams of pro protein in a cup cooked, and it's also got that gluey substance that grains has to reduce cholesterol levels. And all you need to do is put a piece of chicken with that or some fish. T speaking of fish, for cholesterol lowering, important to have two to three servings a week. Of fish. Yes, because um, if you have less than that, you're not getting enough omega-3 fatty acids, which target triglyceride levels. Okay, so that's a good idea. And people say, well, I don't really have time to make fish or I don't, my kids don't like it or something. I say, well, have it up for lunch. You can have a tuna sandwich or a salmon salad or something like that. So try and incorporate more fish. Very good at reducing cholesterol levels. Okay, very quickly, because we only have about 30 seconds left. Sure. Can you break some of this down? Yeah, I want to talk about eggs, very important. The new recommendations, if you have high cholesterol levels and you're on medication for high cholesterol, no more than four eggs a week. If it's well controlled, you're not on medication, but you have a family history of high cholesterol, no more than eight eggs a week. And if you don't have a problem with cholesterol, you can eat eggs, no problem, don't worry about it. Avocados have the good fats, the monounsaturated fats, so try and include some of those good fats in your diet. Right now, there's a lot of controversy on coconut oil. Mm -hmm. So I brought some canola oil, and here's some coconut oil. So I did do the research on this, and they're saying that it still elevates the bad cholesterol. So if you have a family history of heart disease, or yourself, you have high cholesterol, it's not a good idea to have some coconut oil right now in your diet. Because the research is in there. There's some small research saying, well, it isn't, it's not an animal product, it's a vegetable product. Maybe there's some great antioxidants. We don't know that yet. So that's that's not quite yet confirmed because there's there's so much out there right now with coconut yeah. oil and I coconut look, water. There's very, very small research. And that's not good enough as, not yet. as far as regulating health care and, and health policies around it. And it's still highly saturated. And we still know that they did research on two tablespoons a day of coconut oil and it raises your cholesterol levels. So caution to people, but it's got a great high smoking point and it is a vegetable product. So if you're using a little bit to cook, and I think the word is a, a, a little, little bit. bit. 
Use a repertoire of oils in your kitchen. You know, olive oil and canola oils and safflower and coconut. But the thing is trying to use minimal. I put here some sugar. Um, yeah. Just remember that sugar does raise triglyceride levels, even though it's not a fat. And our diets are very saturated with sugar. So that's a caution point for people as well for heart disease. Great information. Thank you. I could, you know, we could keep talking. Yeah, because we didn't talking. even talk about legumes yet. I know, yet. but we're well past the hour. I got <laughs> the third okay. commercial break. We're back with hour number four right after this.